here. Um, this is Stephanie with Unidesk. Um, sorry for some technical difficulty there. Um, we appreciate your patience. So just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started here. As you all have figured out by now, there is a chat window for questions that our presenters will be fielding when they are not presenting. Um, additionally, we are recording this session. It will be sent to all of you who are attending as well as anyone who has registered and was unable to attend. With that, I will pass it off to Leslie Spinks with Free at IT to get us started. All right. Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, thanks, guys, for holding on. Um, just real quick, I'm going to be very brief because we're going to get to the, the meat of the dating here. Um, so Free at Data Solutions is a value-added reseller systems integrator, and we are headquartered here in Austin, Texas. We're hyper-focused on data storage and virtualization. So we're bringing you five of, uh, you know, some, some of the latest technologies in, in the marketplace on our speed dating uh, webinar today. We'll be very brief. Uh, we're going to give these guys 15 minutes to, to, to win your heart, so to speak. If you do have questions, again, put those in the chat. We will also be giving away uh, prizes from each of these vendors, so do hang on um, after each one of these presentations. We'll come back on and we'll, we'll kind of announce a winner there, so uh, please be aware of that. To tell you a little bit about Free It, again, um, kind of go through the capability slide there. We're, you know, again, hyper-focused on the, on the data center, and uh, these are some of the practice areas that we have. These are five of, you know, several solutions and several technology vendors that we do represent. So if you have any questions around the data center, um, any of the questions that you may have from the presentation today, please do feel free to reach out to me directly. And my contact information is there on the last slide. Uh, in addition to that, we're also going to continue to do uh, a tech speed dating webinar and bringing you five new technology vendors. Uh, uh, one one time a quarter, so we'll be doing another one of these. And if you want to follow us at uh, Priet Data on Twitter, um, you can you can stay up to up to speed on the the tech speed dating there. So with that, I'm actually going to turn it over to our first speed dater at Unidesk, and it's uh, Thomas Willingham. Take it away, Thomas. Great, thanks, Leslie, and thanks everybody for attending. Uh, appreciate your time. See if we can get the slide advanced here. So there we go. Hi everyone. My name is Thomas Willingham. I'm the director of Pro product marketing at Unidesk, and I'm here to talk to you today about a new standard in Windows app management: uh, all apps, any cloud, managed once. Unidesk. Our customers tell us they want three things when it comes to the management of Windows apps: cost savings mobility, platform mobility, and an easy way to get to the cloud. We invented application layering back in 2008, about eight years ago, and that's what we're best known for. It's a new method of packaging, managing, and delivering apps using virtual disk container technology. Uh, we've been perfecting this technology for eight years, and yet we're still innovating on this mature technology. We have over 1,400 customers that are currently lay layering over a quarter of a million apps. We have a broad range of customer adoption. We're getting uh, good traction in each industry. In each industry, uh, they're getting a little bit different benefit out of our system. Healthcare is benefiting with the ability to package, manage, and deliver uh, Epic electronic medical record software, as well as some other EMR applications. Manufacturing is adopting Unidesk because of our ability to manage AutoCAD and some other CAD programs. For legal firms, it's about Outlook and Office plugins and our ability to seamlessly integrate those plugins into the system. Uh, financial systems are uh, managing with Fiserv, uh, banking apps, they need access to those banking apps, and we're able to manage that. Different industries will have similar stories of, we need this application, it's very important to us, and with Unidesk, it just works. Let's talk about the problem. There's users out there, and users, obviously, they want to get work done. But they want to get work done on the devices of their choice. They want to have the ability to work on their laptop or their desktop or their tablet or their mobile device. 
and they want a seamless experience while they're doing it. They want to access their Windows applications, and as I said, they want to be able to seamlessly move from device to device. There's a bit of a conflict here. IT pros want to ensure corporate compliance and data security, but users want to just get work done. When we think of uh, attacks on the system or uh, somebody trying to gain access to um, the network, we think of somebody malicious trying to gain access for nefarious purposes. I use the word nefarious. Um, instead, let's, let's take into account a hardworking user. It's 6 o'clock in the evening, they work in finance, they're working on a financial application, and they want to go home and have dinner with their family. They're not done working, but they want to spend some family time. Uh, their company doesn't have a uh, enterprise mobility process in place, so what do they do? 80% of users uh, admit to using personal SaaS applications for work. What does this mean? Well, this means a user uses their personal Outlook or Gmail or Hotmail or uh, Dropbox, personal, uh, OneDrive. They're using their own personal their own personal SaaS-based applications to store this data. Go home, have dinner with their family, retrieve the data, work on it, and then when they get back to work the next day, they retrieve it and it's back at work. But the minute that that data or resources is off-premises, IT pros have lost control of that data. Desktop virtualization helps with this. So now all data and resources are centrally located. Uh, so now users can consistently, whether it's laptop, tablet, or mobile device, have a seamless experience to Windows-based applications. Uh, they can access either a full desktop or individual applications, uh, depending on how the environment is set up. Now to enable this, IT pros create images. Uh, they create images that include an operating system and applications. And on small scale, this works great. They've created an image, they have applications associated with it, life is great. Now what happens when those application needs start getting bigger? Uh, now what happens when other departments want in and they need different applications? Uh, now you start encountering something called image sprawl. Image Sprawl is a company having to manage 10, 20, 30, even 50 different images to meet all these needs. Uh, accounting has, you know, they need office, uh, they need some accounting software. Uh, marketing comes along, they need their own image. Uh, you have some execs come in and they need some one-off apps, so now they need their images. Each of these images have to be managed by hand. The OSs have to be opened up to be patched. The uh, applications have to be patched. If you decide not to do that, maybe you decide to throw all applications into a single image, now you have image bloat and you have licensing issues. Uh, now you're sending that same image with all those applications to all users. Uh, what if you don't want users to have access to the finance apps? So you can see it, it starts to become an issue. And that's not even the typical enterprise environment. A more typical enterprise environment is you have Citrix Zen app, you have VMware, you have uh, Zen Desktop, all in the same environment. So now as these images are created, you not only have to create one image for one vendor, you have to create another image for another vendor. What does this mean? This means that you need that knowledge in-house to manage all those different systems. Uh, you need a Citrix uh, guru in-house. You need a VMware guru in-house. Uh, you need somebody who's familiar with Zen App, Zen Desktop, VDI. It gets really complex. And as this complexity increases, obviously cost increases. So let's take a step back for a second and look at what this costs a customer. So in a Zen app environment, they have, let's say they have 30 silos. If you're not familiar with Citrix, a silo is an individual image with a specific set of apps. So if you have 30 different groups that you're 
uh, supporting, you might have 30 different images. And these are all from customers that we've talked to. One customer was spending over $100,000 to patch 30 separate silos and keep them up to date in a Citrix ZenApp server farm. In a VMware Horizon VDI environment, it was costing them $200,000 to uh, virtualize and manage and update 250 apps for their users. In a Zen Desktop, Citrix Zen Desktop environment, where they were using a PC agent to uh, update the environment, it was costing over $100,000 for failed agent updates for 2,000 users. Uh, uh, typically in a one-to-one -one user to PC environment, not as much of a problem. Uh, as these agents ran, they periodically spike the environment. Uh, again, on a one-to-one -one ratio, not that big a deal. But now when you virtualize those systems, and in some instances, to move to VDI, uh, enterprise environments are just taking a desktop and copying it up. And users have been managing that desktop, so the desktops may be different. So due to differences, due to uh, CPU spike, these agent updates can fail. So we had a customer that it was costing them over $100,000 to fix these failed updates. And then as I said, uh, diverse environment is more typical. And one customer, it was costing them three, over $300,000 to manage uh, their mixed environment, their mixed vendor environment, to manage user downtime. Uh, as you have these different vendors in-house, uh, and these different vendors create additional items in the test matrix. So now the test matrix become harder. Um, users and IT or IT pros try to be as diligent as possible and have these huge test matrices, but sometimes things you know get through. And to fix uh, these issues, again, this this customer it costs them over three hundred thousand dollars to deal with user downtime. Uh, with Unidesk, we help resolve these issues. And then finally, so we've talked about costs. One thing to think about is how do we get to the cloud from where we're at? You can't even get there. So layering. Uh, with layering, as I said, in 2008, we established layering. In 2009, Gartner adopted our definition of layering. It's a method of separating apps from the OS as virtual disks so they can be managed once and delivered wherever. So you create an OS, you create the individual apps, and you only have to manage it once. Gartner admits that layering is the best way to manage Windows application life cycles in server-based computing and VDI environments. As I mentioned, we're the layering leader, and we're the layering leader because we not only layer, we layer all the way down to the OS, all the way up. So we layer the full stack. This enables us to be number one in app compat and app interop. So now, even if a application needs uh, boot device drivers that are available just at boot time, we enable that. Uh, some of our competitors don't layer at the OS layer, so they only get 60 to 70 percent app compat. And they'll tell customers, hey, we have 60 to 70 percent app compat, that should be good. My question to them is, well, is it the 30 percent that the customer needs? If it's the 30 percent that the customer needs, then that solution doesn't work for them. We have two types of images, layered images and elastic layering. Layered imaging is out of band, so we have the this catalog of application layers, uh, an OS layer. You create an image template that tells Unidesk, hey, I want these apps in this OS, and then that's assembled. A VHD is then created and handed off to provisioning systems in entirety, and then the provisioning systems, either Citrix, VMware, whatever, can take that VHD and provision as needed. We also have elastic layering. Elastic layering enables when a user logs on for layers to be hot added. So 
the image can be customized for a user depending on their AD, ID, and group credentials, which supports ZenApp and extends ZenApp uh, deployments. Uh, it also we also have support for both on-premises and cloud-based based structures. We also just won the best of Citrix Synergy 16 for new technology. So as I said, we're not only a mature technology, uh, we're also continuing to innovate. So you have the ability to separate apps from the OS and infrastructure. So you create a layer for your OS and then a layer for all your applications. These can then be assembled to create your image and then once you want to patch, you patch once each of these layers. Uh, Unidesk will then assemble these into the new image. Nice little animation there that shows these layers being assembled into the final VHD. Here's elastic layering, and as a user logs in, this shows, hey, these individual users are getting customized layers for them at logon. Uh, this just, again, references the fact that we won that Citrix Synergy 16 winner for new technology. We're recognized as the only solution that elim eliminates Citrix image management by managing and updating once and then sending that out to the provisioning system. We extend ZenApp to one-off and personal apps with that elastic layer, and we give the ability to have a cloud migration strategy. Here's some OPEX savings with 12-month payback. I'll go over these a little quickly. I'm running out of time. Uh, so the ZenApp environment that had 30 VDIS, 30 silos, over $100,000 savings uh, by managing and patching Windows and apps once instead of multiple times. In the VDI environment, a savings of almost $200,000 uh, by, again, managing 250 apps in an eighth of the time. In the PC agent environment, savings of 120,000, and in the mixed environment, a savings of over 300,000. We are Microsoft Azure certified, so we are in the Azure marketplace. We're the only application management platform that is up there, and we enable an easy path to the cloud. Here is a quick overview of how we're working. Uh, as I said, you create an OS layer, you create your application layers, and then that package can be seamlessly sent out to session-based systems, to VDI-based systems, or cloud-based systems. That same image uh, can be sent to a session-based environment one day. Uh, the platform layer can be changed and updated for the cloud the very next day. Here are some resources that are available now that I've whetted your appetite and you're like, wow, Unidesk sounds really interesting. Uh, I'd love to hear more. You can watch the tech talk and demo of how it works. You can request a trial, go to the blog and get more information, and there's a page for resources. So you can look at those links, go there, and get some more information for you. So let me just say thank you for your time. I know I went really fast. There was a lot of exciting stuff to talk about, and I look forward to hearing from you and wanting to answer your questions about how you want to know more. Thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thomas. Um, great, great timing, uh, great overview there. Again, if you have any questions about this, uh, please pop them into the chat there, and we'll do our best to answer those as quickly as possible. Um, I think now we're going to actually give away the first prize. So if you guys will give me one second here, I'm randomly going to choose somebody from the attendees. So give me one second. All right, so it looks like the very first winner is going to be Chris Lambert, and he is getting a $150 Amazon card from Unidesk. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. We'll go to our next presenter here. He is Trey McCullough with Pure Storage, and uh, Trey, you're on the clock. Take it away. Oh, all right, guys. Thank you. 
Do I have control here? There we go. All right. There we go. Fantastic. All right. As uh, Leslie said, my name's Trey McCulloch. I am a sled specific uh, solutions engineer for Pure, cover the great state of Texas. So, all uh, major markets in Texas, education and local government. Uh, I know we've got some commercial customers and we have a lot of commercial teams as well. So, look forward to uh, talking to you guys more offline. Um, so, I want to start off just with a little level set slide. You know, there's a lot of change that's going on in the IT landscape today. And, you know, virtualization obviously is, is, is driving a lot of this. Cloud is driving a ton, right? There's new expectations because cloud has, has made that for, you know, with shadow IT, the agility of being able to do that. Customers want to bring that in you know, to their infrastructure and have that cloud-like experience with their with their users and really push, you know, provisioning and everything to the end users. So, and, you know, obviously, you know, disk is not kept up with those requirements. So, Flash is really transforming, you know, storage, but upstream, it's it's changing a lot of the landscape and what we can do and how, how uh, you know, efficient we can do those things. And... There we go. So, for, oh, apologize. Getting used to this. There we go. So, you know, what what are Flash? Why are, why are customers talking about looking at it? In reality, it's very very infancy stages, right? You know, we're less than ten percent of the data center storage is Flash today. But you know, fast forward a few years, that's going to change a lot. And why is that, right? You know, one is is a huge efficiency advantage, right? It's much simpler, it takes less power, it's much, much more effective. And really, you know, at the end of the day, it's giving, you know, you and your your uh, your businesses and, and uh, you know, public sector solving the mission much, much faster, right? I'm accelerating everything. I'm able to do things that, you know, before I just wasn't able to do because of, you know, the performance increase that Flash is, is, is causing for the environment. And then I want to get into Pure and kind of what our vision is, you know, what we're doing, and it's different in the industry, because uh, we're really trying to transform things, right? We founded the company uh, and started shipping product about seven years ago, and really based upon, you know, our software. Uh, let's see. I didn't do that. Trying to get back. There we go. Oh. All right. So, you know, founded really on software and, you know, primary storage deduplication, we were the first to do that and really make Flash affordable to deploy, right, seven years ago. And now, you know, with the, you know, the ever economic change and the downward spiral of at the component cost, you know, it's really getting to where customers are going, okay, I can, I can actually deploy this. You know, and then add on deduplication, it really drives the cost down to really less than we've been spending on enterprise storage. And, you know, we're, we're our, our software core, you know, is really designed around, you know, the simplicity message. As I mentioned, we're all flash. Everything is, is, flash, is flash from, you know, the operating system that this runs, you know, right down to the data that we store. So that accelerates everything. The whole system is, is orchestrated in rest space API. So it's made for cloud, made for orchestration to really give that cloud experience and tie in to all of those orchestration products that, uh, you know, are gaining popularity. And this idea that data is forever, right, and, and it's going to, you know, we're not deleting data, it's growing at exponential paces, you know, and how do I manage that, you know, transition of having data forever? So what we did is we coupled our, our, our software with really a Skunk Works division inside of Pure that was about three years ago established to develop a hardware platform that we control, right, and gives us a lot of flexibility and a lot of innovation on the hardware side. So software plus hardware, and then wrapping a different business model around this, right, and a different experience for our customers, right, and that's from everything from the simplicity of the storage and how easy it is to manage you know, down to how I procure this and how I take that forward. We've got this forever flash model that I'm going to get into that really changes the economics and, and the buying pattern of storage, right, to let you get, you know, use those assets for much longer 
and what the industry has, you know, really trained our, our, you know, ourselves to, hey, I've got to change my thing and forklift every three years. We don't do that. And then also support model, I think, is a, a vast differentiator for us that I'll get into as well. So I'm going to kind of skip past this. Everyone knows, right, that we're trying to do things faster, smarter, more innovative, and, and you know, ultimately drive simplicity and lower cost and really, you know, run IT as a cloud. That's, that's the day where we're trying to enable our technology. So I always like to start with a few examples of what customers are getting, you know, value out of our solution, really even before I start talking about the speeds and feeds and the tech, right? So this is, you know, I'm, I'm public sector, so I picked some, some public guys. Um, you know, this is a, a city that, uh, you know, was doing VDI with us and getting 19 to 1 data reduction on their VDI environment. We size it at 10x, you know, and regularly go way above that like with this customer here. That means that I've got to, you know, buy 19 times more traditional storage in, in a traditional system versus a pure system. So that's huge cost savings, and, you know, that drives it down to, you know, literally cents a gigabyte instead of dollars, right? And and this is for all flash. And we boosted performance by 40%. BDI has been, you know, stricken with, you know, problems, you know, with adoption and storage has been, you know, the, the major, you know, guy that's, that's caused a lot of the problems and we really fixed that, right? Going from 20 milliseconds down to sub millisecond latency. Another one uh, is you know, more of a kind of a traditional environment, VSI, just, you know, a bunch of servers on a VMware environment, you know, five to one data reduction, and that's pretty common for what we see across our 3,500 arrays installed. And, you know, the beauty is that sub millisecond latency, everything going faster, and that just makes, you know, the entire stack run better. Last one, a little closer to home, City of Garland. You know, they started with VDI, which is, you know, rather common for our customers, you know, love the pure storage experience, you know, went through an Oracle consolidation. So Oracle's, you know, database is another area that we really see customers migrating to Flash because it accelerates the entire stack above it, right? Everything is, the database is a linchpin. But the cool thing here is, you know, with consolidating the servers, getting some faster servers, hooking up to pure, we're able to compete, you know, complete their batch processing 96% faster. They thought it was a mistake. They had to check it, right? It's like this thing runs all night and it runs, you know, in minutes with you guys. This is crazy, you know. But the other cool thing is we saved them one and a half million dollars in Oracle licensing through this project. We were able to consolidate to less servers. This this really drives, you know, our customer experience. And this is, you know, SAP Matrix uh, verifies our NPS score, and you know, the customers just love us, right? Seventy nine percent of the, of our customers would recommend Pure you know, to a to another colleague, right? And on the support side, even higher. And then Gartner, you know, puts us as a as a leader in this space. And that really drives, like I said, happy, happy customers. So how do we do it? Right, let's get into, you know, kind of technology plus that business model that I that I talked about, which really drives a customer a better customer experience for our customers. So redefining storage, that's what we're trying to do, right? We want to make it simple to acquire. Number one, right? Two to three line items, all the quotes. Gone is the day of having the Dakota ring to understand your, the quote that you're getting from your storage vendor. All the software is included. So there's no per terabyte license. There's no per feature licensing. It's, it's like Prego. It's all in the sauce, right? And we, get, and we put a lot of guarantees to make our customers feel really comfortable, right? You know, return policy by default, right? 30 days. Uh, you also have the ability to you know, really sit down with us and understand that workload and what the dedupe is going to be, and we'll put our we'll put a, a guarantee in front of you that says you know we will get you this this much storage because dedupe that's one thing that the customers still have a little bit of angst about it's new right but it's real you know so we can sit down and help you understand that as I said simple to operate really sim really simple that support experience I'll get into in a minute how that's different and what that means to our customers. We open 85% of our support cases for our customers, you know, and then the two that that, that uh, the most common that we don't open are I forgot my login, you know, I haven't, haven't had to manage this thing in so long I don't even know how to log into it, and then how can I dim that orange vessel? <laughs> that's, that's literally the two top calls to our support, and then uh, simple to upgrade in that evergreen storage model. So I'll get kind of into that right now because I think that is a key, a key differentiator. 
for Pure and, and what that, you know, outside of the technology, what the business model does for you. So, you know, modular technology, right? So I can start small. I can start with that one BDI project and I can seamlessly grow from the smallest peer system to the largest peer system, all non disruptively, all while you're running. You know, we got customers regularly doing upgrades in the middle of the day because they've got so much confidence in our platform. Um, and all of those upgrades, you just pay for the difference. That is a, that is a huge difference for us. Never rebuy a terabyte. Right? If you buy 10 terabytes from me a day, these SSDs are going to get humongous. Right? You buy 40 terabytes from me and you know, three years from now, and it's NVMe technology versus SaaS technology, you want to take advantage of that. I can roll that technology in, suck the data out all non-disruptively, and put it on the new, take, those, take that 10 terabytes back and only charge you for 30 terabytes at the price per terabyte then. Because right? this stuff's going down, down, down. So a huge difference in, in upgrade. The maintenance is flat and fair, free every three. So what Forever Flash is, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to twist your arm, you know, come to you in your four and say your maintenance went up, come to you in your five, you know, it really went up, you know, and just make it so painful you have to, you have to, you know, flip to a new technology. We don't want to have our customers go through that angst, right? So every three years, I'm going to come and upgrade the system. I'm going, and we've done this with our install base. So our old FA series were based upon, you know, a server chassis, you know, with coupled with our software. The new M series that I'm going to talk to you about is custom hardware from Pure, built right in Houston, Texas, by the way. So, you know, this is, you know, customers that have been with us for, you know, since the early days, you know, we're already migrating them and we're making that investment, giving them that, in that new M series chassis that, that, you know, we're trying to get nine more years out of, right, through just upgrading those controllers every three years. A lot of future proofing has went into this box that I'll share with you in future slides. This is what it does, you know, for your, 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 uh, how you procure storage, right? Normally we, we're, we're trained, I've got a huge capex, right? What's my depreciation schedule? It's every three years, it's every five years, whatever the case may be, but I know I'm going to have an, another big capex expense. Here, you make your first purchase, all you do is pay maintenance and your upgrades, right? What do you need to grow the system by, you know, and then in year four, I've got another maintenance bill and I come out and give you new controllers really a different model and it's, you know, massive savings come out of that. There we go. All right, so Flare Flash is kind of cool, but, you know, how else am I going to save you money? Flash is, is, is expensive, right? That's the perception that people have. And, you know, the reality is with deduplication, we make that Flash look, you know, a lot bigger, right? Like those examples I was giving you, 5X, you know, 10x, you know, and, and plus in some cases. Your mileage is going to vary based on the data types that you put on us, but, you know, most people are virtualized, running VDI, we're taking a lot of clones. All the copies come for free. So that, you know, frees you up to do things that normally you wouldn't do because it would be too cost, it would be too cost prohibitive to take, you know, clones every hour, to let the database guy, you know, take, you know, reporting servers and this and that. You know, you just don't have to worry about that with Pure. The other thing is power savings, right? Because we are flash, because, you know, of our hardware platform, we take the power of a toaster, right? Versus traditional storage sucks up a ton of power. So that is another huge savings outside of the capital expenditure, but, you know, your operating costs, your data center, foot, you know, footprint is going to be, you know, greatly lessened. And then performance, right? I mean, I want to accelerate, and this more is on the business side, right? I'm, what, you know, if I can make your storage run, you know, 10, 20 times faster than it has in the past, what does that do to your, to, do to your business? It transforms it, right? And that's really what we're doing is transforming our, you know, our customer's business. And then effortless, right? This thing is 30 minutes to install. It's easy to manage. Everything is plugged into, you know, VMware, you know, or Microsoft or any of the other platforms and, and orchestration software that you want to use, or you can, you know, manage us with a couple of clicks. So, you know, giving you your nights and weekends back, not having to worry about storage anymore, that's cost savings to, to you and, and not pulling your hair out, right? So this is just an example, right, of what we're doing, right? 2X, 2x investment return and 14-month pay, payback, right? So massive, uh, massive benefits there. And then what I was talking about before, right? Software innovations where we started, 
And then we started that Skunk Works division to, to do hardware innovation and develop this M series, which we launched in June of last year. So software, you know, we are designed for Flash. We started with a blank sheet of paper and said, Flash is going to be our medium. We're not a legacy, you know, platform that has had to bolt on Flash and treat it like disk. We do not treat it like disk. You know, we literally have different firmware in our drives to say, don't do any garbage collection. All of the all of the, the things that, you know, enterprise SSDs in these traditional systems are doing, we're doing in software and we're doing it better, right? We protect your data with RAID. So we're, st we're still using RAID, but it's very, very fast. You know, drive rebuilds are like four minutes uh, because everything happens so fast. Uh, we encrypt the data, you know, in non-disruptive upgrades. So because we're a stateless controller, upgrades become very, very easy. Right? We don't have a lot of the, you know, the legacy stuff. We've, we've really, you know, done things differently. And like I said, efficiency, flash reduce, deduplication, compression, and flash recover, and then how we, how we care for that flash. And then I'll talk about Pure One, our cloud-based monitoring software as well. I've got to kind of speed up a little bit. So here's just a picture of the uh, the chassis, three U, 20 slots. Uh, the NVRAM up top is very interesting. This is this is something that we've built out of NVMe. So we're already using NVMe for our our our, our, ca our caching, which is very low latency, right on the bus, right? Um, you know, and then we expand these with two U two U uh, shells with 24 uh, more slots, right? And we got three models that you can grow again, all non-disruptively. Just pay for the difference in price between ones. So you don't have to start with a big model; you can start with a smaller one. Very simple to deploy, operate, and like I said, all the software is built in. So real quick, I'm going to end on the Pure One. So really, we're trying to transform the, the, the support experience in a big way as well by using technology to do so. So this is kind of, you know, I'll build this out. You know, you've got your angry customer, you call support, they escalate to engineering, they escalate to core engineering, we find a fix, you know, we get a happy customer, and we, you know, we started creating these fingerprints, right? Then we improve that angry customer still calling in support. Support goes to this fingerprint database. Hey, I found the issue that the customer's having, and fix happy customer. Now we're taking those fingerprints and doing proactive scans across our customer to find issues before anyone hits them. Our systems are phoning home and downloading logs every hour, so we already know how your system is configured before you call in. You know, we scan those. Oh, we found the customer that had a problem. Uh, or, or a couple problems here, fix number one, fix number two, happy customers, you know, engineering, and poor engineering sitting on the beach, and, you know, I'm all kinds of happy because my customers are happy. And then last thing I want to leave you with is other things that we're doing outside of Flash Array, you know, is we've got an unstructured uh, system that's NAS, high performance NAS, all flash, again, for you. And that for you, I can do 1.6 petabytes. That's what's coming, guys, in flash. It's getting extremely dense. There's no SSDs in here. This is custom designed logic by us. You pull these things out, they're like server boards with a bunch of daughter cards that have flash on it. And then it's a scale out, erasure coded system, and we can literally stack these things up and you know go into the exabyte scale if you need it to. Baby flash array, M10, sub 50K. And then we're also working with uh, Cisco and doing a lot of converged infrastructure with them. And I believe that is all I had. Thank you very much for your time. Look forward to uh, follow on discussions. All right. Thanks, Trey. Um, nice job. And again, guys, if you have any questions, just post those in the, the chat. Uh, there and uh, we'll also answer any questions you have uh, via email or phone call at a later date. So we want to go ahead and, and keep this pace up here. We're going to announce the next winner and this one is for a Parrot AR drone from Pure Storage. So the next winner is Gareth Kada, C-A-D-A. -A. All right. Awesome. Congrats. So with that, I uh, want to want to keep keep on going here. And our next our next technology vendor up is VM Turbo, and we have a Topher Piazza from VM Turbo. Topher, take it away. Thank you very much, Leslie. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. My name is Topher Piazza. I'm from VM Turbo. I am the territory manager up here, um, particularly focused around San Antonio and Austin. 
but also in the surrounding Texas area, part of the Texas team that supports the entire state. Um, if you could pass me presenter. I'm not presenter, I'm sorry, keyboard and mouse. All right. So what is the problem that VM Turbo aims to solve? It's very simple. Guarantee application performance. In today's heavy virtualized environments, um, this has become a challenging problem for companies raising from the enterprise level all the way down to your mid-market. And the goal behind VM Turbo is to deliver a control platform for this virtual environment. A uh, little overview behind the company. Uh, founded in 2009, located headquartered up here in Boston, Massachusetts. Apologize for the, uh, the thick accent. 2010, 2011, we went public with the product. Um, we've now seen, we're tracking towards our 24th consecutive revenue growth quarter. Um, raised some CRD funding back in 2014, and right now we are just over 1,500 enterprise customers. Uh, the customer base is spread across several different verticals. Um, we try not to pigeonhole ourselves, so we have enterprise level customers from service providers, financial services, insurance, even technology companies that manufacture and sell some of their own monitoring solutions. Uh, the reason they're making such heavy investments in VM Turbo is simply that we solve a different problem. Now, I bet a bunch of you are saying on the line to yourselves, hey, it's all good and grand, Topher, but we're not HPE. Uh, we don't have as many workloads running as CSC. Well, a lot of my success and a lot of our team's success has been found at the mid-market level. Um, reason for this and the reason behind this is they're starting to solve the exact same problem with even more limited resources. So someone like an HPE, which is running over 100,000 workloads in their private cloud, also has an ample IT staff to care and feed for the environment on a day-to-day -day basis and has a very large IT spend. Um, what we're seeing at the mid-market level is they are seeing the same demands for an increase in data, faster SLAs, and more applications, but they're seeing a decrease or steady or not so steady growth in IT headcount and IT budget. So the question is, how do they manage and bridge this gap? And that's where VM Turbo is really aimed to help you solve. When talking with our customers, one of the main problems we're seeing is how do you manage the trade-offs between performance and efficiency? The business is demanding that their applications are performing. Uh, I think Trey highlighted it very well in his presentation. Uh, in the 80 HG generation that we are now, we know what we want, we want it when, we want it now. And so while we're trying to deliver this back to the business, uh, we also have bosses um, and people in charge of the finances who are saying, I want to see you do this and deliver this service at the lowest possible cost. And so VM Turbo's platform is aimed to help you manage these trade-offs for any workloads running anywhere, anytime. We are hardware agnostic or hypervisor agnostic. I don't clear if you're running 100% on-prem, a hybrid cloud model, private cloud, or 100% public cloud. The platform can integrate with all this and can help you manage these trade-offs at every level as you continue down your progression of your IT roadmap. Uh, what our customers are seeing from the platform uh, is 30% faster response time with their applications, 30% more application transactions per minute, and a byproduct of guaranteeing application performance and managing those trade-offs between efficiency and performance is we're showing they can run on roughly 30% less infrastructure than they have today. So being the ability to not necessarily shut down um, hosts you guys have already invested in, but the ability to defer out future hardware costs or repurpose some hardware you already have to help get back to more innovative projects or growth. So where we're really changing the game and how we have really positioned ourselves in the market is we want to change the ideology in the mode of IT operations today from a monitoring standpoint to a control. So VM Turbo's control platform is a decision-based platform that will use software to help drive and care and feed for the environment on a day-to-day -day basis so your IT operations team is spending less time firefighting and reacting to alerts or managing what's going on in the environment. Everything on the market today, I don't care what platform you guys are looking at, what you have currently, it's primarily focused on your infrastructure. It's going to look at your storage, compute, network, and memory, understand what's going on with those resources, and then leverage some kind of alert or utilization-based uh, alerting system on KPIs that you guys have identified usually give you a good overall view of the infrastructure's health 
and alert you when you get out of it. Now, what's the problem with this? Well, it typically takes an alert from an end user or a call from an end user or an alert from the system to let you know that degradation of service is occurring or there's latency buildup in the system or applications are struggling due to resource constraints and your team has to go in and isolate, correlate, and then remediate the issue. The problem with this is it's very manually intensive. It relies on the humans to go in to kind of understand what's going on in a very complex environment. And it's typically happening after service has already been degraded. Where we want to come in and change this and use the idea of control is we want to focus on the one constant in the virtual environment, which is constant change, constant fluctuation in your workload demand. All we care about is that demand and making sure there's access to the supply in real time. So by focusing on this application tier, we can allow the environment to start making decisions around sizing, placement, and capacity to help keep you healthy. So it's this idea of being preventative. Let's drive out risk perpetually in the environment in real time. Let's not let you get to those uh, restraints, cross those thresholds. Instead, let's start taking it as it starts to build in the environment to make sure you are constantly in a state of health. Now, what do I mean when I say a state of health? I mean a place where you are A, performant, and B, being as efficient as possible, both your operational team as well as your current investments in the infrastructure. So this idea of allowing the environment to self-organize using real-time decisions. So the platform really has three parts to it. Um, so we install the simple OVF. We have a 30-day free trial. Um, downloads within 15 minutes upon deployment within the vCenter, or depending on what you're leveraging for a hypervisor, we're going to map out the entire environment from the application tier all the way down to the storage arrays. Be able to match out, understand what's consuming from where, all those interdependent relationships, and then give you a pre-prioritized checklist where you can click a box, check apply to start driving your environment to a state of health. However, as I mentioned earlier, the one constant in the virtual environment is constant change. So not only are we just going to give you this one-time fix, the real core value behind the product is the ability to automate this and leverage this in real time. So as you start to understand and start to trust the software's decisions by taking them manually, we can start to then turn on some of the automation um, switches around sizing, placement, and capacity to start keeping you in that state of health as demand is constantly changing. I think I'm getting a little bit of slowness right now on the presentation, I apologize. And that's really the idea behind that self-organizing infrastructure. And then lastly, and one of the main value props we've been seeing with a lot of our customers is the ability to do future planning, so capacity planning, understanding the ability to run what if scenarios based on adding additional workloads, changing out of your current infrastructure, whether it's on the storage tier, if you're going to be upgrading any hardware issues. How is it going to affect my workload demand today? Do I have enough supply? Do I have too much? Can I repurpose some hardware? And if I don't have enough supply, how much more do I need based on the specific specs from the hardware vendor to start driving you to that state of health so you can make sure your performance is there? So that's really the, the presentation I had today. Uh, I want to say thank you guys for coming out. Uh, if there's any other questions, definitely feel free to reach out to myself or Leslie uh, with the free it team. I'd be more than happy to help you understand a little better what we do and how we can help drive value. Thanks, Topher. Nice job. Um, awesome. Again, uh, keep those questions uh, coming, guys, there in the chat, and we'll do our best to address them and uh, follow up with you if we don't have time to get to them. Uh, so awesome, I appreciate that. So uh, we're going to go ahead now and name the, the next winner here in line. And this winner will get a Fitbit uh, from VM Turbo. And the winner is Robert Dudley. All right, congrats, Robert. So awesome. To keep keep on going here, we're, we're good on time. We're going to keep the train rolling. We've got Falcon Store up next. And from Falcon Store, we've got Pete McCollum. So, Pete, uh, you're up. Take it away. Thank you very much. Hopefully, y'all can hear me well. Um, and, of course, my dogs have been quiet the whole time I'm on mute, and now they're joining um, in with my presentation. So I apologize in advance for that. But, hey, I, I uh, work from home, so it's always fun like this. So um, I decided to take kind of a different tactic than we normally do 
on on webinars, and I took this dating thing pretty seriously. Um, you know, I've been married for 17 years, so from what I remember about dating, we're supposed to talk about what we're going to do together and get you to like me in the future, not tell you about all my past dates that I've been on. But rest assured, Falcon Store has been around for 16 years. We've been solving problems in technology, in storage in particular, disaster recovery as a second effort, you know, for a long, long time. Some of the first people in the VTL storage virtualization. Um, and we've been on the front edge of, of the storage realm for oh, it, what seems like forever in the tech world. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, what is, if I'm going to tell you what Falcon Store is and kind of explain that the free store is our product, Falcon Store is the company, and free store is our storage platform. Um, so we'll just establish that a little bit. And my goal is to give you a really good idea of what's going on in the industry, why a, a middleware, why a software-defined storage platform helps and augments all the things we've heard today and how a company like Freeit actually helps us to, you know, how, how we can all together use these product stacks to go and better your IT experience and ultimately what you're delivering to the business. So, now that I've stolen most of my own 15 minutes, um, this is the only marketing slide I really have. It's our vision. So what FreeStore is delivering to the is an enterprise class software, software defined data structure. So what we mean is this is everything stateful. We don't rely on cache. We don't run in, um, in any kind of secondary system. We are a primary storage capability just like you would find within a storage controller in an array and we add features and capabilities on primary and secondary storage so we can deal with slow legacy storage across multiple protocols and we can also deal with modern all flash environments like pure and and help to add capabilities in particular in how one technology communicates to another and regardless of location and all this so I'm going to explain a little bit about how this vision works and, and help you have an understanding of, of why you may want to kick the tires and go on a date with Falcon Store so, I also will tell you that I made this deck. I've never actually done this deck before, so it's loads of fun. Um, so what are we dealing with? So today in your infrastructure, regardless of size, I don't care if you're eBay, if you're Amazon, or whether you're Joe's uh, Five and Dime, you've got some kind of storage either in a server or on an array or in a hyper-converged box, but you have storage that holds what is critical to your business. You get to it through a transport layer. This could be fiber channel, this could be Ethernet through networking, this could be your Wi-Fi router sitting on a bar in your home office, right? If you're anything like my home office. And then you have compute, whether these are laptops, servers, uh, blade servers, it doesn't really matter, but this is where your actual applications process inside of your business. And then you also have locations. So I'm getting a little bit of a delay on my awesome animations here. So in the locations, that means you may have primary offices, you may have remote workers, you may have manufacturing facilities, branch offices, robo, sohos. Um, it may just be somebody sitting in a hotel lobby working for the day while they're waiting for a meeting to happen. And so the challenge of IT is now to pull all these things together and make it happen seamlessly. And we've heard other vendors talking about these capabilities and requirements. And, and for sure, we're in the same boat trying to tell you a different way or a better way or an augmented way of solving the same problem. And so one of the challenges that, that I faced when I was running data centers and I know you're facing today is you have many, many vendors to choose from. And by and large, as your environment changes, you are choosing many vendors. In smaller companies, we typically tend to see one vendor, two vendors, perhaps on a storage. You may only have one array, one type of switch, one type of server, one vendor. But as you get larger and larger and larger, you see more of a sprawl in the technology choices. And that's a wonderful thing because it allows you to fight competitively for price and capabilities and keep up with the best in technology. But we tend to see things that even though people want to be greenfield, meaning brand new, newest technology, there's always something you're leaving behind. Very rarely do you see someone just starting a data set from scratch and creating something new. And that's awesome when we can do it, but for the most part, we're either acquiring, we're growing, we're changing, we're watching technology. And so when we have multiple vendors, we also end up with multiple tools. And for some reason, I'm not 
clicking. There they are. Oh, so you have people as well. You have different teams. You have your storage team, your remote users, your application owners, your security folks, your backup and DR, your application, your virtual admins. And we've heard other people talk about this as well today. And so the challenge is when you have all the people in their skills, they tend to like what they know and they tend to operate within the realm and the silo that they were trained on. And so what that does is creates a tool sprawl. Right? Some of these are just consoles for different types of storage. Pure has an awesome console for watching the analytics within pure storage as com yeah, um, arrays. And I highly recommend that you go and check out a demo of what they're doing inside of their, inside of their arrays. The interesting problem is that if you also add some Dell storage and some Nimble storage, each of them have their own consoles and their own way of managing, which is fantastic for getting in and managing those arrays. But in the end, what happens when you're distributed and things start getting messy and now you also have some Dell management tools, HP OpenView, Cisco tools, OpenStack now comes in and you have a Horizon interface and now you have 10 or 20 or 30 different interfaces to look at everything across compute and storage and it starts getting crazy. Right? And, and all you really want to do is just stand up a new Oracle server or a new SQL server to go and run an application. And IT gets really upside down because of processes that are unique to vendors and all this, DR strategies that only work with a certain piece. We only have dedupe on one array but not on another. We can only replicate from one array to the same kind of array. So I can only go from site A to B but I can't go from site A to C. And, and this becomes an actual problem. And if you think I'm making this up, I'm certainly not. I've been in the industry for a long time. And I Googled just for fun a network diagram. And this was one of the things that came up. And notice the title at the top where it says Simplified NAS. Like, ha, right? This is funny. But it actually came from Google. And this is someone's network diagram. And if you zoom in on it, you can actually see that it really does, it really maps out an IT infrastructure. And it's rather funny that this is what we used to present to IT directors and things and they just look at us and say I pay you too much and not enough please never quit right because this is insane so the goal of a lot of the technologies you've heard from today and that you'll be seeing in the future is we want to simplify IT operations you've heard of things um, I'm trying to remember it now oh DevOps it's a big thing right now ITIL DevOps CMMI TOGAF um, all sorts of different acronyms that mean we're trying to organize all of our operations into common processes that even if my entire staff was hit by a meteor or blew up in a building, we would still be able to maintain business functionality through the technology environment. Right? And we're never going to get away from the application-centric monitoring, reporting tools. Your DBAs still need to get to different things. Your server admins may be out there. But what FreeStore really does is it sits between your storage and your applications and helps manage cross-vendor storage interaction, give consistent processes for storage, snapshots, replication, DR, um, mirroring, fin provisioning, and I show some of these on another page, but it sits between all the different vendors who you might take and different protocols. It bridges through whatever uh, transport layer you have and it feeds up into the compute layer. So whatever you're using from blades to physical servers, running whatever operating systems or structures that match your data today, we run these statefully, which means that everything that we tell an application is committed is committed for sure and not just sitting in volatile cash and we help optimize a lot of what you're already doing in five or six different tools and we do it all through one interface. So this may look overly simplistic but this is what we help manage whether it's in your site, whether it's in a remote site or in the cloud and we can run in almost every public cloud that's out there and certainly with many private clouds and ultimately the big deal is, is, is we may not be the right fit for you if you just have one array and you already are very happy with your backup and disaster recovery um, tool sets. Um, but what we're finding is most people are okay today, but when they get to the next step of buying the next new piece of, of technology, that's where things start getting kind of crazy. Um, and I don't think I have enough time for stories, but I have lots of great stories where people have taken you know, one technology, they're going compellent to compellent replication from many sites to one, their disaster recovery is great. And then Pure Storage comes in, sells them an awesome all-flash array, solves a business problem of speed and performance and monitoring and analytics, and they're very, very happy. 
except for the fact that now they just broke their replication in DR, so they have to buy more pure storage, which is awesome for pure, right? But on the other side, if they don't have the money to go and do that, how do we bridge the gap of replication, snapshots, disaster recovery now, keep the legacy stuff in play, but slowly add in the new technology? And that's where FreeStore helps pure to sell more. It's where we help Dell to, you know, to deal with that replication, maintain what they have while it's being phased out by the company, and it and it puts the the user in the driver's seat of making technology decisions for the best of technology that they can get their hands on at the time, and it allows you to maintain these these IT structures um, while you're making great decisions on your new technology. So, it's kind of important to say how does it do because many people still say I don't get it. So what happens is arrays will give storage to us, to free store, as if we were a controller for all of your storage. So we get the storage that once was given to your host environment, whether it's VMware, Hyper-V, Zen, OpenStack, Amazon, Azure. So we take that storage and now we add features and capabilities on top of it or we allow you to use the best capabilities of the array below us. So Pure has fantastic deduplication in an off, in an off flash environment. But let's say that they're coming in over NVMe or fiber channel but all of your compute layer only talks iSCSI. So we can do that translation in our box where you still get the best capabilities of the array below us and allow to pass it on up. What if they already have another all flash array that they don't want to get rid of, but they do want to switch to pure? Let's say it's a Caminario array or something like that. They can actually stretch cluster, mirror, and replicate or migrate data now into the next new technology that works best for us. And obviously, my dog agrees. If you can hear him in the background, he's like, Great idea. That's awesome. So, moving right along. What happens is the servers now receive the storage from Falcon Store that's feature rich, high availability, and stateful through whatever protocol makes sense, whether it's replication, iSCSI, fiber channel, NVMe, however that's going to work. And now it feeds it into the ecosystem. I'm not sure why my click isn't working. Do, 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 there it is. And the hypervisors then receive it like they always do. And as far as they're concerned, it's just storage, whether it's RDMs. VMDKs, VMFS volumes, VHD, containers, whatever you're going to be doing, you, re you receive that storage as if it was just coming from your SAN or from your direct attached storage. And then the applications and operating systems now get consistent, application consistent. That means we have agents that when we capture a snapshot from the storage layer, we also can tell the application to go be quiet so we can guarantee recovery across a whole slew of different applications. So hopefully this makes a little bit of sense where in some senses people call us a storage hypervisor in other cases people say oh well you're a storage middleware and the answer is yes we're all of those we're also a virtualization engine we're also a feature rich piece we also have VTL capabilities to go and make disk look like tape we have deduplication and all this fun stuff but you have the choice to use whatever component is required in your business at the time that it's required so I'm trying to boil this down and make it a lot more simple than you might think. And, and if any of you have ever bought a universal remote, you'll know that it's oftentimes far more complicated than it might be worth, and you just go back to using six different remotes. Um, but the idea I just wanted to clarify. So FreeStore is a storage platform. It is a universal remote control. So you saw the, you know, I, I talked again about how Pure has this fantastic looking uh, GUI. Ours looks very, very similar, except we're going to pull analytics across not just the Pure storage below us, but also across any of the other block vendors that sit below us and be able to correlate all of that data across the platform so we're augmenting the core capabilities of what's going down we're not replacing them but we're augmenting these capability capabilities and giving you a universal view of what's going on inside of your environment so if you're an MSP this is great for predictive budgeting to go figure out where you're going with all of your um, all of your resources you can see performance bottlenecks in one tier of storage and help shift those transparently to other tiers and make better business decisions about what you're doing in the storage and and we do this because we're not owned by hardware, we don't have hardware, we run on any server, we're not disk, and so we have the ability to speak to everybody, we certify extensively for performance and capabilities, um, and we make sure that we can apply your business requirements universally across this storage. So it's a lot of fun and it's a great product from a small business when I started I started with maybe 20 terabytes in the environment ended up with close to a petabyte before I just quit my job and came over to work for Falcon store so 
it was a lot of fun back in the day and it's gotten better and better and higher performance we can run off of mobile devices off of web interfaces and quite frankly we can integrate with any other rest api based tool set so you can come up with a master console and and add whatever operational requirements you have whether it's a self service cloud portal or so on and so forth but what we are not we are not a hyperconverged box. We can kind of look like that if we wanted to, but we're not the compute layer. We are storage and transport. So we're primary storage features and routing, and we're a protocol router. So you can come in on fiber channel, go out on iSCSI, you can come in on NVMe, go out FCOE. And so there's all sorts of different capabilities we have in that space, but we represent more of the bridge between legacy and the um, and the future technology and whether it's your own on-premises or in the cloud and so we require the physical arrays to be underneath us to actually provide the storage that you're going to use and how do you get it I went right past the slide so we are our good friends over at free it in Austin and I'm based in Austin as well and so the way you get this is certainly to talk to any and all of us to go and find out how it can help within your infrastructure and, and the best way to go and deploy, whether it's by standalone arrays, standalone components, or whether having a free store-like capability as a software layer between your storage and your compute and creating that operational efficiency, FRIAD is definitely capable and we're certainly there behind them to help to go and bring this into your infrastructure. And that's it. That's all I have. Hopefully it made sense for you, and hopefully you could actually hear what I was saying through this whole thing. All right, awesome. and just a quick reminder um, for any people that are attending here and sending us questions, please be sure to send those questions in the chat window as opposed to the questions window just so that all of our panelists do have access to them and we can interact with you better. And I will hand it back to Leslie. All right, thanks, thanks Stephanie. Thanks, Pete. Uh, great job there. Um, so awesome. Uh, we're actually ahead of schedule. You guys are doing a fantastic job of, of speed dating here. So want to go ahead and announce our next winner. Um, and this is a $100 Netflix gift card from Falcon Store. And our next winner is Scott Fitzhugh. Uh, I hope I pronounced that correctly. So uh, congratulations there, Scott. And we're going we're gonna to keep right on going. Again, remember, uh, post any questions you have in that chat window, guys, and, and our experts there will, will do their best to, uh, to answer them um, and, and, and follow up. So our next presenter here is uh, Warren Arnold with Nasuni. And take it away, Ar Warren. Okay, thanks. Yeah, as mentioned, uh, my name's Warren Arnold. I'm with Nasuni. I'm one of the uh, uh, systems engineers here. And uh, do I have the screen? There we go. Yeah, and so uh, I don't know how many of you ever heard of Nasuni before. Uh, the name actually means Network Attached Storage Unified, and I'll talk about what that means in, within a, you know, the course of this presentation. Uh, but, you know, the, the SUNY has been around for, uh, since 2009. We've got a lot of different customers across just about every market segment. Most of our customers are uh, large uh, companies. Uh, you know, well, we have a lot of small companies with a few terabytes of data up to very large companies that have, you know, nat multinational locations around the world. Uh, the thing that's common between all of them is, is that they all have some amount of file data. Uh, it could be, you know, unstructured data that's CAD drawings or engineering data or medical images or, you know, just office documents and things that require collaboration between sites, which is harder to do, especially as file sizes continue continue to get larger. Uh, from a company perspective, we're very customer focused. In fact, I would say that the vast majority of our roadmap and the features and capabilities we're adding are uh, driven by our customers. We typically have customer summits every year and then most of the uh, feedback from that actually goes into the product roadmap. But, uh, you know, the, the key point is, is there's uh, architectural and engineering companies, construction companies, medical companies, uh, city and state and local government, you know, Hyatt Hotels, Fairchild Semiconductors, they're across a wide variety of different market segments. Uh, Nasuni has, uh, 
you know, we provide storage as a service, which means that we integrate a local on-site caching controller, and I'll get more into that, with the cloud on the back end. This gives us the ability to have unlimited scale. You can basically increase capacity by increasing cloud capacity. Uh, you can, you know, keep snapshots forever, whereas trying to keep backups forever on terrestrial disk systems gets very hard. Uh, we've you know, got 12 petabytes of client data stored with Nasuni, 20 billion files stored, and we continue to grow quite rapidly. We're also a Microsoft managed ISV and a Microsoft partner. We're available in uh, Azure Marketplace as well, uh, so we can be deployed by customers just going to the Azure Marketplace and then deploying us from a test perspective or, you know, evaluation or production. Uh, we're growing quite rapidly. We just had another record quarter. Uh, we add, we're adding about 140 plus terabytes of new data from new customers every week, uh, you know, and 30 million files. The other interesting point is is that since we use the cloud, typically Azure uh, primarily, and then AWS on the back end. We write only worm data and we never overwrite data. And so in the entire time we've had, you know, our customers since 2009, we've never had a data corruption event of the data stored in a cloud like you might have on traditional disk systems. Uh, the system is designed, UniFS is our patented file system. It was designed for the cloud, not disk-based systems, right? So it was designed to run in the cloud as an object store, take advantage of many of the capabilities you have there. It was designed for no real limits from metadata uh, or data objects or and that gives us the capability of scaling very well and offering high performance against everything from very small files to extremely large files. And so there's a, a lot of good things and we can get more into that you know, if you're interested uh, as we go forward. So uh, Nasuni, waiting for the slide to change. Uh, you know, like I said, we're we're focused on unstructured data, right? We're not going after block level workloads, and we're not going after things like CRM or VDI. Uh, we're le that fits well within Pure and other Flash players from that perspective. So we're focused on unstructured data, which is growing quite rapidly, right? Uh, you know, files continue to get larger. Uh, customers want to keep data longer. Uh, we need people in different cities collaborating on different projects now. It's no longer siloed. Uh, the you know, as my data capacity grows, so does my protection mechanisms. Right? I need to back up more data. I also need to replicate more data offsite for DR. And uh, then there's access. No longer is everybody just sitting in an office all day every day. Uh, you know, accessing files through UNC Pass or map drives or NFS exports. You know, people are on the road. They're traveling all the time. They need to access it by whatever device they have with them, however they need to at the time. There's also sharing and collaboration outside the company. Uh, how do I collaborate with someone that I don't have an AD trust relationship with? How can I send and share links and collaborate with people in, you know, other companies, locations, and things like that? So access has changed quite dramatically as well over the years. And so the SUNY was designed to provide, you know, a solution around all of this, grow, scale, whether it's sites or whether it's capacity, data protection, which is built into it, and then, you know, multiple methods for access. So, you know, if you think about traditional infrastructure today, uh, most customers have storage. They may have, if they have multiple sites, they may have servers or storage or uh, components at those sites. They have backup, whether it's, you know, to disk and then to tape and then off-site or replication from to different sites uh, for DR purposes. Uh, they may be using, you know, tools like Dropbox or Box or OneDrive for Business or other tools to allow people to synchronize and share data. Uh, you've got you know, uh, all of these different moving pieces that fit together that are typically managed somewhat uniquely, uh, but the key point here is, is all of them aren't necessarily easily under IT's control. And as my data continues to grow, so do the needs for the other uh, aspects, right? My backup continues to grow, replication does. I have more users added to the system. I need more mobile access, uh, and I need more control over it at the same time. 
And if you take a look at this and think about it in a, a simple sense and then you expand it out to, okay, well, I have 50 offices nationwide or worldwide or things like that, how does this look? Well, you get this picture on the screen that's very hard to, to read simply because you have all of these locations, all have some infrastructure, some components, all have to be managed. Uh, so there's a tremendous IT overhead or burden uh, that's associated with this as well, as well as the constant refresh of, of pieces and parts as you go forward. You know, Nasuni was designed to help solve this problem, right? Our goal was is how can we take this, simplify it, down, provide you all those capabilities, but not add complexity. In fact, you know, simplifying it more. And so, you know, as I mentioned, UniFS is a cloud-based file system. It was designed to provide, you know, unlimited storage and capacity of data and metadata, extreme security. Everything that is written to the cloud or ever leaves in a SUNY file or appliance is encrypted. You control the encryption keys, not the SUNY, not Azure, not AWS or someone else. Uh, you know, it, there's different levels of redundancy in the cloud for, you know, protection of number of copies across it. Besides, you know, the public clouds we support, you know, a private clouds like EMC Atmos or CleverSafe as well for customers that have those. But typically, in a sense, we have the cloud, which is the center. Cold, contains the gold copy. As I mentioned, we've never had a data corruption event. And so you have you know, multiple offices that have caching devices or appliances. You could have 100 terabytes in the cloud, but in a very small office only need access to a few hundred gig. You could have you know, an office with a large number of users that needs to cache 10, 15, 20 terabytes of data out of you know, 500 terabytes of data accessible. If most customers look at their file data, they'll see that they have a lot of data that's been created that's been sitting there for a very long time that doesn't want to get deleted. You still need it. The reality is it's still sitting there locally. It's still taking up disk space. It's causing you to have to expand. It still has to be migrated the next time that you add more capacity uh, or another system as you do upgrades. And so our view was is the master copies in the cloud and we cache hot data at the local sites. Uh, each site can, you know, have think of it as a global namespace, and I can cache a portion of that global namespace, one site, two sites, 50 sites, 100 sites worldwide. This gives us the ability that a person in, you know, an international office can be working on a Word document that's locked in their headquarters in New York, uh, and then when they're through, the person in New York can edit it just as if they were working on, you know, a single local file server, except they still have local performance. No longer do they have latency of going back to a centralized site. As files continue to get larger and collaboration becomes more important, that becomes more of an issue. So this gives us the ability to scale out in sites simply by adding appliances at, at local sites or scale capacity in the cloud simply by turning the dial. Uh, from a uh, local caching appliance perspective, we have uh, everything from virtual machines that run on ESXi or Hyper-V. Uh, we have uh, virtual appliances that run in the cloud as Amazon AMIs or, or uh, VMs in Azure, as well as a whole suite of different hardware appliances based upon size, footprint, IOPS required, and, you know, other criteria based upon local performance. Any can be mixed and matched, and, you know, quite frankly, well over half our deployments are all virtual appliances that customers deploy today on their virtual infrastructure. Especially as they go more towards flash-based systems, uh, they can get excellent performance with a very small footprint caching the hot data, but still have access to everything, uh, and no need for additional appliances as well. So if we were to take this and, you know, think about it a little bit further, you know, basically you think of scale, right? Uh, by utilizing the cloud, there's, we have no limit on the number of files, folders, or directories. I mean, there's a limit for most practical applications based upon Windows Explorer or other applications, but uh, UniFS was designed with no real limits. You know, high performance NAS at the edge, uh, and, you know, basically you can, as I mentioned before, scale capacity very easily. Uh, you can migrate data in very easily to the system, uh, you know, and then the cache is intelligent enough to be able to cache the hot data and all of the colder data or data that hasn't been touched in a long period of time is still immediately accessible in the cloud. Just click on a file name metadata, if it's not in cache, it pulls it in. 
the uh, data protection that's built in also is integrated into UniFS. Think of it as I can take snapshots once a day, once an hour, once every five minutes, once a minute, right? Uh, from any site, I can have different uh, volumes of data with different snapshot parameters based upon that typical uh, data set. I can have antivirus or auditing to on different volumes as well. I can have shares within that that are visible at one site but not visible at another. Uh, I can have mobile access capabilities to the data in the shares as well. So from that, you know, think of it as I now have, you know, uh, backup protection built in and from our management console we can basically restore data anywhere within your infrastructure. If I had 50 sites and someone, uh, a user right clicked to restore previous version and couldn't go back far enough to find a file from a year ago, I can go into the management console and select that location, select a particular date on a calendar, take a particular snapshot, find the file, restore the file or a folder. Uh, we've had customers that got hit with things like CryptoLocker, and this gives them the ability to roll back to a snapshot five minutes before it, restore all of the metadata. Uh, it's a very fast restore, whether it's you know a few gig or whether it's hundreds of gig or terabytes, and then immediately start accessing that data. So there's tremendous flexibility built into it. From the management console, I can deploy a new volume anywhere. I can connect it to any location around the world. I can set policies on time of day, quality of service, right? I don't want to use all my bandwidth at these sites uh, during the day and I want to have more in use at night. I can, you know, create policies around auditing or, uh, you know, uh, quotas, different things like that from for billback applications. The goal here was is to a provide more than just visibility into it, but provide you full control and then alerting as well, right? So I can manage all the devices, all the data, pretty much effectively from a single screen. The uh, customers, I mean, we have many different customers, and we usually a lot of them are great references. We'd be more than happy to put you in touch with them. But for example, Perkins as well has been a customer of ours for a long period of time. You know, when we talk about scale, they started with some number of sites and you know, 25 or 30 terabytes, and have scaled up and grown, and more data, more sites, more data, more sites into the hundreds of terabytes now. Uh, you know. Many architectural firms have found that over time, they now have engineers in different locations that uh, need to be able to collaborate. No longer is you know this office working on a project. They have someone in another location or another office that is available that might be doing HVAC, while someone in another location may be doing electrical. Someone else is doing you know mechanical and other things, all on the same project based upon availability. And so the need to be able to collaborate, especially with applications like AutoCAD or Revit uh, that are very uh, multi-file, large-file intensive with high performance, uh, is critical. TBG is a landscape architecture firm. They're based in Austin, Texas. Greg Nichols, they've been a customer of ours for a long period of time. They used to fly people in to be able to work on projects, uh, which got quite expensive and very disruptive. Now they have people in different offices that can all work and collaborate together, uh, making it much simpler. So uh, as I mentioned, Perkins and Will, you know, they replaced uh, Avamar and VNXs, right? Uh, so their whole backup scheme was replaced, which netted them, you know, quite significant savings, right? 65%. Uh, Most of our customers have found that through the replacement of many different moving parts in the storage unit, unit stack, they can basically overcome, you know, a lot of cost, and most of it have seen substantial savings on the system. It also gives them the ability to scale, collaborate, uh, and you know help maintain costs because they know exactly how much it's going to cost, you know, year after year and per terabyte if I added another 10 terabytes. Right? They're actually the fifth largest architectural firm in the world as well, and have you know 25 offices you know around the world. Uh, JSJ is a manufacturing company. I mean, when we first started with them, their biggest issue was we have sites in China that do manufacturing for us as well as Mexico. And so, how do we uh, 
work with these people. We send them plans, they implement it, we need to get logs and things like that back and then modify it so that we can ensure quality control. Uh, so how do, how do we do that and how do we do that effectively, quickly, inexpensively? And so uh, they put us in to replace a lot of their existing storage systems in these sites as well as uh, replacing MPLS by going directly to the internet in a cloud and we're able to save 40%. That, you know, to them at that point, that was a, a huge saving and simplified their uh, IT, their management, and their cost structure dramatically. ARA, uh, another Austin-based firm, uh, they do radiology images. Uh, as you know, medical has uh, is a great target space simply because, you know, if you think of radiology and MRIs and images, it went from you know two D to three D. Files went from you know one size to ten ten times as large. Uh, you know, how do they? provide this, store it, keep it, manage the data growth, keep it for, you know, X number of years, the life of the patient. And so uh, ARA moved over to Nasuni because it gives them the ability to keep the hot data, uh, local images and things like that that have been created within some period of time from a Fuji PAC system uh, on site. Doctors can read it, still high performance, uh, are able to basically, you know, uh, continue the work the way they did before but reduce their cost savings dramatically because no longer are they storing it locally on an isolon, replicating it off-site as well. And as they need to add more capacity in nodes, uh, it, with Nasuni it's very simple. You turn the dial. With isolon or other traditional storage systems, uh, it gets quite expensive as you continue to scale and grow. The other interesting thing is, is our caching appliance was actually faster uh, in a lot of cases than the isolon was. Uh, which was uh, quite surprising to uh, them based upon the fact that, you know, number of spindles and, and nodes and processors that were in the Isilon at the time. So that's Nasuni in a nutshell. I mean, we can go into uh, a, a lot of other detail if it's of interest to you. We typically, you know, like to get to know, you know, your network and what you're doing and your storage and your specific problems. And, you know, we'll be the first to tell you whether we're a fit or not, right? And if we're not a fit for what you're trying to do, we'll, you know, tell you and then tell you someone else who might be. You know, that, that's our view. And uh, I think it's actually worked out very well, and most of our customers, you know, respect that. But, you know, the goal here is how do you manage your file sprawl problems? One site, two sites, growth, retention, legal hold, all of those things, uh, and replace tier one storage uh, for, you know, whether it's NetApp or EMC traditionally in that sense. And uh, that's what Nasuni does. You know, it eliminates backup problems, off-site DR problems. Uh, you know, like I said before, I can go back and recover any amount of data just by going into the management console, picking a date on a calendar, a snapshot, clicking anywhere within the structure and restoring the data. Uh, fast system files from anywhere. Uh, that's due to the global namespace and UniFS. And then, you know, one of the things I didn't talk about significant, you know, significantly is our mobile access. We have web-based access. We have uh, syncing clients that are a lot like Dropbox, except they're under IT control, right, uh, that run on a, a Mac or uh, a Windows system or, or even Linux systems. We also have iOS clients or Android. So from my mobile phone, I can access something if I need to. If I'm out of the office and I just need to get a file and send it to someone, I can go to my mobile phone, click, click, and send it, right? Uh, I have a Mac and a Surface Pro 3. I use our sync client to sync up so several folders for sales engineering as well as, you know, my home directories. If I was to drop either device in a puddle of water by accident, I get another one, I load the client, I synchronize all my data down and I'm ready to go. I don't have to worry about that anymore. If I delete something, I can go back and through the snapshot process on the SUNY, restore previous versions and go back to any version of that file. So the goal here was is to provide you a very flexible system, addressed f file sprawl, data growth needs, address the backup performance needs, and then, you know, provide you with a tremendous amount of flexibility and how to deploy it and how it might fit in your environment. And so with that, uh, that's Masuni in a nutshell, and I'll turn it back over to uh, Friat. All right. Thanks, Warren. 
So uh, again, thank you, thank you to all our presenters. Um, you know, if you have any further questions, guys, we want to make sure that we can get those answered. So do do feel free to reach out to me directly, uh, Stephanie. If you, if you can pull my contact information up there again, so everybody can see that. Um, and we'd we'd love to to meet with you and talk more in depth about a lot of these products and these solutions. And um, you know, we we could come on site and bring you guys along and 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 answer any of those questions that you had. So. I want to make sure we give away the last item here. So we've got a Yeti cooler from Nasuni, and our last winner is Jocelyn Thomas. So that that's uh, that's the last winner there, guys. And congratulations to everybody who who won something today. And we'll make sure that we uh, get in contact you with you one on one to get those items to you. Again, thank you to everybody who uh, joined us today. And uh, look, look out for an email. We'll make sure that you, you guys have these presentations, all of our contact information, and an opportunity to follow up one-on-one. -on -one. So, again, thank you. Uh, Stephanie, did we have any, any more items to close? Thanks, Leslie. Um, I think we are good on our front. So we do have Leslie's contact information up on the screen right now for you all. Um, if you do have any questions that um, weren't able to be answered, we will sit around in the chat for a couple more minutes if you want to send them that way or feel free to contact Leslie and he will forward those on to the right person. Thank you again for your patience on um, our technical difficulties toward the beginning here. And uh, have a great rest of your day, everyone.